Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here, and I'm gonna give you the truth, the actual truth about a keto. And yeah, I'm in my pajamas because it's midnight, and I didn't plan on doing this video, but I just got spurred on by an excellent video by my friend Akidoka Lenny Sly of the Rogue Warriors. He just put out an excellent video. I'm actually going to show from clips of that with his permission. And I'm going to talk to you about all these other videos that I've appeared in recently in the Aikido world and kind of take you through the timeline and tell you why I'm now in thrust in the, into the Aikido world and tell you why some people say Aikido sucks and other people say Aikido is just awesome and the best, man. When the truth is somewhere in between. And what the truth may be is something like Aikido mostly sucks for everything it's not intended and doesn't suck for the things that it is intended. I mean, go figure. So Aikido doesn't suck at the stuff it's really good at. For cops and security guards and, and nurses and people that need to control drunks and mentally disabled people without necessarily hurting them too bad or only giving them one or two attempting strikes instead of beating the hell out of them before they can get control and pin them and arrest them or whatever they need to do. Oh my god, but Aikido, especially the way it's practiced, sucks for full-blown engaged MMA fighting. Well, yeah, go figure. Anyone that says that is kind of just repeating something obvious. I don't know why. So guys, um, if you don't aren't familiar with me, I've trained like 33 years in martial arts, all kinds of different martial arts. I have four black belts, uh, coveted black belts. I fought pro in MMA. I've trained with more MMA fighters, sparred them for like 22 years around the world um, than any other because I moved all over the place in Japan and Asia and all kinds of places. And um, I've bounced off and on for 23 years. So let me start taking you through some of these uh, videos. We're going to get to Lenny's uh, uh, clips in a second. We'll get to that towards the end of the video, guys. Let's look at this video I was recently in called The Top 4 Akidokas in MMA. This one surprised me. I think at Christmas time or New Year's it hit. I think it was like New Year's Eve this hit. And someone that read it like tagged me in it. Second one on our list is Daniel the Wolfman Theodore, a stuntman and MMA fighter. While not having a stellar MMA career of three wins and three losses, he is a well-known instructor for many MMA gyms and athletes. Dan mostly combines his Aikido with wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and sambo to create and catch a unique grappling style that is both effective on the ground and stand-up. But he's most famous in the internet, however. And I call my style catch jitsu, by the way, and my other style in the gi karate go jujitsu, by the way. Um, but I thought you guys might like to see that. And uh, yes, I won three early NHB type fights by first round submission, and my losses were three of the top ten most experienced fighters in the entire world when I fought them or now. Um, including guys that were heavier than me. I weighed like 197 to 205 without cutting a single pound in my fights. And guys like Jeremy Morrison that I armbarred in a couple minutes, he weighed 211. Jeremy Horn, they said, oh, pros don't need to weigh in. I'm like, I'll fight him anyway. I just want to see him on the scale, thinking maybe he was a blowing up 220. If it got to the second round, I thought he, I know when he tired in the middle of second rounds. And his previous rings fights, fighting, you know, when he was blowing up on, uh, I don't know, whatever, fighting guys like Randy Couture and Noguera and stuff. He just fought Randy, and he was probably like 220, 222 when he fought Randy. Anyway, I think he was 220 because they got him on the scale at like 210.9, and I thought the scale was light. He would have beaten me anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's the tough mentality that people had back in the No Holds Bar days. Anyway, I kind of thought about making a video anyway, not only because of Lenny Sly's video, but this guy, Hard to Hurt. And this guy, oh, this guy said this about me. What does he say? And uh, considering they're calling me out and using my videos, I think any of these people will let me you use know, a couple of clips of their videos. Artists with some combat sport experience. They brought up Kathy Long, Jay Dudes, Jason Delucia. Kathy Long, I coached once. I tried to help her uh, get like, fights took what they learned and adapted it into other things and one that came up was dan the wolfman and yeah so i like his eyes when he says maybe aikido works uh if you're using it on people that you outweigh by 100 pounds in like 30 percent sparring what you guys are pointing out is well that's not really fair and uh, i'm pretty mad at him for that actually i kind of replied a half joking one to him but also one real one to him on his page 
because number one, the first guy in my first video, and I'll show you clips of in a second. Um, that's a tissue, guys. I've been sick for 11 days. Um, <clears throat> bronchitis and stuff. So, um, the guy in my first video, he was he much bigger than me, heavyweight deep fighter. And the other guys were pancreas fighters. These are professional fighters. And this guy, I looked him up, I found out his real name. Looks like he has some decent stand up, I mean, decent stand up skills. He's an amateur level kickboxer, MMA fighter. Maybe he's a blue belt in jiu jitsu, I might guess. If that, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen him on the ground, but just his attitude is like very like amateur MMA guy. I've been around them my whole life. Um, you know, and been around pros. I know the difference. Um, you know, so I've seen, seen that. And anyway, that's bleeding, by the way, from the cold. I worked all night outside the other day. Um, Anyway, he shouldn't be talking about pros. Talk about me, but don't talk about the pros in my videos, because you couldn't tap him out with anything, let alone the Kodagaishi and Nikio that I was tapping him out in. So uh, what he's referring to is what blew up the internet, guys, was um, my first video I made. And here's this guy. This is my video. Finally, real Akito, new Steven Seagal. This guy's a heavyweight deep fighter. And here we're grappling live with MMA gloves on, so no MMA gloves and wraps can make it work. Now, I didn't get the full Kota Gaishi, but I broke his structure, which brought me down to the 10-finger guillotine, which got me wrestling the top control, and shortly thereafter, actually, it's not in this video, but if you watch the original video, shortly thereafter, I think I hit him with the uh, catch wrestling reverse total and submitted him with that. These guys, I believe, both fight in pancreas. These are, these are long, established, very good grapplers, and that's what like an idiot like this sees. Number one, I'm big, but I don't use a lot of muscular contraction when I grapple. Not at all. People think I'm strong. I use good body weight distribution. I'm heavy. If they're like 170 and above, I use body weight. But um, I don't use a lot of, of um, power or muscular contraction. So this video I actually made originally because this troll on Sure Dog was talking shit, and I hate it when people look down on arts without realizing all arts or all styles or all cultures have something to offer. So I'm showing them Kodagishi, and I'm showing, well, if you reach the other way, it's Nikio. Um, so there was three pro fighters right there. Okay, so no, it's not 100 pounds. Maybe it's 20, 30, 40, whatever. I don't know. I think it was 218 at this time in Japan. I don't know what time in Japan this was. I've been there so many times, like nine times. Um, you know, and lived there, kind of, basically. So anyway, that was my first video, guys. And that was actually made to combat a, a simple-minded troll on, on the Shirdo forum back in the day. I'm glad I did it, because it blew up. And, uh, and this kind of put me in this other realm and got me these other followers. Guys, if you like that video, look for the more real new Steven Skull vs. MMA Grapplers. And this is me using Aikido, Sistema, TMA, Kung Fu Concepts. Uh, again, my page is catchjutsu.com. You can go to my website, catchjutsu.com or thecombatsystem.com. And people, uh, people that are not very good in martial arts say, oh, it's just because you're big. Well, sometimes weight has a small thing, but it's really, I know how to put my weight even standing up through rooting, through structure, um, higher level concepts. So this is like higher level concept stuff. And there's some people in the comment section that absolutely don't get it, and haters and trolls, so you're just big. But there's also a lot to do with um, just body mechanics and how I move, but uh, sensitivity, concepts of sensitivity, of... of um, things like this, and these are things that you get in arts like Aikido or Wing Chun or Jeet Kune Do or Kali that you don't, in, in more like what's labeled TMA styles, even if some of them aren't that old, versus um, the more modern stuff. Now, yes, do I think you should know how to wrestle and do judo and jujitsu and kickbox and boxing? Yes, of course. Of course. I have never said anything different. I have just said, ladies and gentlemen, I enjoy all the flavors of the world just like I do my women. All right, <laughs> the world has a lot to offer. Appreciate it. So, guys, look at my videos labeled uh, "Real Aikido," "New Real Steven Seagal," whatever like that. It's kind of a joke. Um, my cousin, uh, actually, I believe he's a very early black belt from Steven in the '80s. I've never met Steven Seagal. I know that my cousin is a uh, um, designated marksman, aka sniper, on two different SWAT teams, and I know sometimes he does teach police arrest control tactics like I've done a seminar helping teach uh, minor plot to mount and some other things the crazy jack-in-the-box take, take down that people think is fake um, until they actually felt it 
um, some things work, guys. Some things work. And definitely, I think I've proven in real settings of live grappling that things like Kodagi Ishii and Nikyo, and occasionally I'll hit a Sankyo, uh, work. And then we'll talk to some uh, Lenny Sly, who's better at Aikido than me. I just got a brown belt and I've dabbled at it three times in my life. Um, but anyway, so it's interesting that I've kind of been put in this world. Oh, here, I'll just show some highlights oh, here where it starts to go into live. This is me trying to do, um, when it came to like real pressure testing, Aikido-like takedowns. This is not Aikido. Some of it's just modified Ashigurami, Judo, Sambo. I don't really care what the so-called style is, guys. But this is a, 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 some footage I took and I, I sent to Roka. Some of these takedowns are actually in Sambo and the FSB and um, their secret service uh, basically use some of these techniques here, which I was finding the most successful going to the outside of the jab. I try to move a little bit inside here, and he actually popped me once. The only time he actually really hit me was with a cross here in a minute. I'm constantly telling him to actually don't miss on purpose, but to aim towards my chin. But this is breaking structure. It's a stemba, it's a keto, it's whatever. Takimusu, Aki, whatever you want to call it. So I'll talk more about a keto, what it's good at, and what it's not good at. Guys, it is not good at, as a standalone fighting art for almost all people. For almost all people. Maybe Lenny Sly could fight a little bit, it looks like, and then some other people, but they're very rare in the Aikido world. Now, a guy like Gozo, or in Judo, Mifune, people don't realize how amazing, or someone like Hickson, how amazing true masters are. You can tell how low level someone really is, that they're just on the very low end of like I train MMA bro, or I had a couple fights bro, um, level if they can't see a true master, okay? Um, in any style, it shouldn't matter what style, whether it's, I see some Tai Chi, Bakwa guys, I see the same thing, I see, see Gozo doing an Aikido, or Ueshiba, or um, Mifune in Judo, or Hickson in Jiu Jitsu, I see the same thing. Or even Vasiliev or Robko, which other people make fun of. They never felt it. They don't have the experiences that I do. They don't actually try shit. They're just net shit talkers. Um, so anyway, Aikido as a standalone fighting art, is it good? No, they don't pressure test. They have bad training methodology, all this stuff. You should know. Is it horrible? No, when I'm injured, when I'm getting older like I am now. I, I enjoyed the classes I was taking. Actually, everywhere I've gone and done Aikido... Um, the few times in my life, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Like, good people. Good energy. It, it's not bad to harmonize and blend with other people's energy sometimes. Instead of constantly fighting, boy, that's not bad. If you're talking about a combat art, well, what it is good at is that as a ancillary or secondary or tertiary art, if you have a delivery system, and a delivery system would be something like a live grappling randori art where you go live, you pressure test live, judo, wrestling, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and then if you have a keto flavoring on top, now that's what can be very good for security guard like I've been, I've been uniform and ununiformed off and on for 23 years, and I've put many, 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 many people up on their tiptoes with Kota Gaishi, and sometimes Nikyo, um, I've done it many times, that's why I can pull it off for real. Go figure. And um, nurses, orderlies, people that work in psychiatric homes, uh, you know, things like this. Um, it can be very beneficial. That's not herpes, that's a crack of blood thing, you dirty people. Um, so, um, anyway, here's something from Rokas Leo, who changed the title of his page from Akito Saulia, I don't know how he ever said it, to Martial Arts Journey. So we'll see that now. And just hear what he has to say. I think all these people, were, since they've used my videos, I think I can use their videos and it's all fair use. And hopefully no one has said problem with it. What methods could we use, what other people already have, uh, have experienced and have developed in order to solve this issue. So a lot of great talks will be out there. In the very first talk we'll have with Dan the Wolfman, a well-known 
very experienced martial artist. He also had some professional UFC fights uh, sure. and just a great guy in, in totality. He was trying he to four black belts in different adapt rounds, to keto. Uh, a lot of self-defense experience in the combative area and also in the traditional martial arts. He has a brown belt in Aikido, which he'll tell you more about in the interview. But basically, he, he's the guy who can really look at how Aikido works in pressure tested scenarios. Uh, you might have seen some of his videos, they went quite viral, where he applies uh, Aikido takedowns in, uh, in, in sparring sessions or even in the ring. And so anyway, um, people follow his journey. Now he's of course doing more jujitsu and MMA and um, that's that's fine and I suggest everyone to do that, especially when they're younger. That are, Those are the things that you should be doing. Um, that doesn't mean when you're older per se. Or when you have a combat effective base and delivery system that you can't look into adding in flavoring from these other styles. This is what I've always said. And why I can catch pros with things like calf slicers before they were cool to do. Or the crazy locks I do, hammer locks and whatever all this catch wrestling stuff that's now like part of jujitsu even though you know it wasn't when I was teaching it 10, 15 years ago. Being a product, uh, you know, uh, a student of Gene LaBelle and um, Dan Severin like I am and had training in Japan off and on for like a year and a half and training with Pancreas and Shudo Fighters and things of that nature so take what is useful from any source here's some more Rokas talking about me some great skills and also some videos where he where he uses Aikido in, in pressure testing situations, uh, even in, in even in a so um, guys, <laughs> does Aikido suck as a standalone fighting art? Yeah, unless if you're like modifying it and training it and pressure testing it, like maybe Lenny's just starting to do his video he did tonight, and I'm gonna show you some clips in a minute. Um, and, and Rokas was kind of talking about, and I did an hour, hour and a half long interview with him, and I gave him ideas how to do it instead of an hour key class, do an hour and a half, and that means three three minute rounds of live randori grappling from your feet, whether it's non stop or it's takedowns plus 10 to 15 seconds, I call it. Aikido wrestling or takedowns plus 15 seconds of submissions. I do this with all kinds of people around the world because it helps with my transitional submissions and I think it lands itself well to a very important part of MMA and very important part of self-defense. So I get more practice doing standing locks and more practice doing takedowns and more practice doing takedowns directly into neon belly spin around arm bar, et cetera, or whatever, or hitting, snapping them down and doing a 10 finger guillotine or power assist per guillotine. These are very important skills to have, especially on the street where you don't necessarily want to stay engaged grab for six minutes like at a competition or eight minutes at a competition but you got to get down and dirty and do business and keep awareness because you fight multiple opponents a lot of times they may have buddies and they may have a weapon i have fought multiple opponents i have fought people with weapons i have survived listen to some advice from people that have been there and done that i'm not saying i'm the best fighter in the world no i was three and three in mma but my losses were the top guys but that was when i was a blue belt in jiu-jitsu too not when i'm a black belt now i'm a black belt me jj black belt from gene LaBelle and Gokar, black belt and daito juko uh, hardcore karate slash early MMA style from the founder, a black belt, first black belt under my Taekwondo master when I was young, um, and a brown belt in Aikido, and, you know, a lot of system knowledge and, and, and other martial arts as well, JKD, and uh, etc. and so forth. Um, here's Lenny Sly again, I'll hear what he says about me, and then I'll show you his new clips. on his YouTube channel, catchjitsu.com is his website, but it's Catch Jitsu YouTube channel. Um, yeah, we had a really good day yesterday. He and I connected. Uh, he reached out to me, which was really, I was really, uh, I was flattered by that. Contacted me through Facebook. We hooked up, got on the phone. We talked for over an hour. Dude, <clears throat> some of the stuff that he said in the video was actually fucking hilarious. I loved it. I thought it was a great video that Rokas did with this guy. I loved the inter interview with him. Um, so there's Lenny Sly, and I think that was really nice of him to, to, to get, talk about me so much uh, that he does on and on in this video. And, um, you know, we've talked on the phone a long time, like an hour and a half after that, and um, occasionally we correspond. Uh, he gets busy a lot, you know, he works hard, and he's got a wonderful family. 
Um, and I wish the best for him. And, and he's a guy who's saying Aikido. But he changes it a little bit and he, he tries to modernize it. And then he puts in um, hand deflections or salutes, like I used to call them. Seagull or Seelot salutes, I call them in other videos that I made way back in like 2012. And um, anyway, guys, I'll show the clips now. But Aikido should keep trying to pressure test. And whether it is full, like, hey, let's grapple just live. Whether it's judo, jujitsu, catch wrestling, aikido, I don't care. Grapple and see what happens. Spar, see what happens. Or what I suggested to him after this video is I want to see more. I want to see two by two minute rounds. Or I want to see you doing take that aikido, call it aikido wrestling, or like I do with people, takedowns plus ten to fifteen seconds. So you, as soon as the transition stops, you, you get up or you try to flow and get your energy boom and go right for the the submission. Or aikido, take it like you're a self defender or a cop, or a security guard, or a nurse that has to protect herself, and you take the guy down with your kodagaishi or whatever, katanagi, whatever, and then you pin him on his belly, or you go to knee on belly, or you go to knee on throat, or go to a double knee rad. Like, I've always thought law enforcement, I love the double knee rad for these purposes. So let's see Lenny, because he pulls off some really amazing stuff here, and he gave me permission to use his video again. So this is going to be hard for me to do. So he is grappling live now. The defender is trying to stop kodagaishi. As I'm doing but this. Lenny says he'll flow to whatever off the Kodagishi attempts. So we got a Katanagi variation that first time. There's another, I would call that a Katanagi variation, even though he had an overhook instead of an underhook on that arm. And then he was giving him the Ikkyo pin after that a little too easy. So he's looking for the Kodagishi here. Students defending. Now that was beautiful. That Ariminagi, I've played this back about 10 times. Because he read where the guy's posture was broken, posture was broken from the attempted Kodagishis, right? So his head's low right here. And he sees that it hits his back, breaking the structure yeah, further, Ariginami up and down with a wave on the neck. And he really applied Ariminagi live. I think that's probably the first time I've seen a actually a live Ariminagi. Where the, the defender was somewhat this is this is live. I mean they, they set up the rules. Um, all I suggested is that he continue it on the ground. Well, yeah, lost his balance here, his point of counter, but he used a bit of a uh, um, kind of a sumigashi throw with his butterfly hook there and back to standing, gave him a little shove. There is a Kodagashi. But this is great. This is what Akito needs more of, and I'm glad that Lenny is doing this. Oh, and boom, gets behind that elbow, and there's an Ikkyo pin, a real Ikkyo pin there. Now, if you don't see the control that Lenny has um, right there, he really bounced, I've really bounced. If you don't see how that is helpful for someone that is like a cop or a bouncer, throws him over a bit with a tempted katanagi, he resisted, his structure wouldn't get broken, and he threw him with a tomonagi, or kind of a sumigashi, that was more a tomonagi. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to Nick and Rod go. So this is a great video by Lenny. Now you see he's a little winded here, and he's only gone for about a couple minutes. So, but he talked for 10 minutes first because Lenny likes to talk. Come on, Lenny, you know, you talk a lot. Is, I'm talking a lot. This is a hell of a long video. I'm sorry, guys, if it's boring, but I'm giving you the real breakdown from someone that kind of knows that's been in the TMA world and the Aikido world and have fought MMA and had street fights and been attacked by two guys with sticks and been attacked by 10 guys when I went to rescue MMA author Clyde Gentry who got sucker punched and I put a guy in a rear naked choke and used him as body armor when the other people are trying to punch me and then sucker kick me when I'm down. I've had these situations and other situations and knives and broken bottles and I took a gun away from somebody uh, who was pointing at me while I worked at a gun store a month ago now where they're trying to kill me but I was talking to someone and all of a sudden there was a gun there. Now did I do a cool crime of thing? No, I did. It's a very systema reactive thing and I just grabbed the barrel, got my hand off the center and just ripped it out of her hand. But I don't know. Because it very well, a lot of times, idiots, they are loaded. She was pointing a gun right at me. I hadn't talked or acknowledged her before. I was just dealing with someone else, and someone comes up and just it points a freaking gun at me. It could have been a robbery. So, you know, I've had some other stuff happen uh, overseas as well and stuff. Um, but, anyway, I'm glad he's did that. What I suggest to him is we want to see more. Next time, do a, do a follow-up video in a month. Do a follow-up video, do two two-minute rounds or two three-minute rounds, and just talk a little bit in between. I hope he does that. And I said, you know, let's 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 follow it to the ground a few seconds. So if you can get in the M belly, if you can get the Ikkyo pen face down, that's obviously the best. That's what cops want. That's what bouncers want. So you can get their hands behind their back. You can't, don't let, the hand is what kills you. 
Um, you know, but if you need to go to knee on belly, go to knee on throat, go to knee on face, go to double knee ride, go to the stuff that I preach for law enforcement because he, he has that bouncing background. He'll know how to follow that up. I hope he does that. And then people will call that real pressure testing. This basically was real pressure testing here. But if you do that and do like a, a keto rest,